Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're talking about today, we're talking about breaking the fear of intimidation. And uh, Father, we just come before you right now. We pray your anointing. We pray, Father, that, that you'd help us, you'd give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in the hour that we're living in. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory. This is a great day to be alive. Do you believe that today? And uh, I am really excited about that. I believe that God has given us gifts and weapons to destroy the weaknesses of our flesh and to break fear and intimidation from our lives. And I believe if we just carry on and believe God that he's going to help us. I'd like for you to open up your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We mostly all know these scriptures, and I, I can almost recite them as well. But it's good to be able to read them and to be able to just uh, glean a little bit more from them. And uh, this is what it says in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 3. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. When you, st when you start to read that, and, and the Bible speaks a lot about war, it's, we've got to realize that this Christianity is not just uh, a bless me club. It's not just uh, everything's going to flow nice and we're not going to have a problem and, and we're not going to have a pain or we're not going to have an enemy that's going to try to steal from us. But it does mean that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Don't war. You you'll, don't get the victory that way. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. This is where I believe the church, we've drifted away, we've, we've slipped away, and we've got into some sort of a bless me thing. It's all, you know, God's bless me, bless me, bless me. But you see, there's an enemy out there that wants to rob from you. There's an enemy out there that wants to stop you. There's an enemy out there that wants to bring uh, discouragement into your life. And sometimes if we just accept it, if we just say, oh, well, that's life, and, you know, this is happening, for us, for some of us, perhaps if you, if you can't bend your knees like you used to, you say, well, you know, that's, I'm old or something like that, and you accept something. I want to say this, friend, don't accept anything that the enemy wants to put upon you. Don't just accept it. And I'm just using that example, but there's so many things uh, where the enemy might come up to you and say, you'll never ever make it. And so what happens is that we, that thing just comes on, onto us and, and all of a sudden we find ourselves saying, I'll never make it. I'll never make it. See, that's what you've got to fight against. That's what you've got to uh, come against. You've got to say, hey, that is a lie from the pit of hell. I will make it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We've got to bring every thought. You see, this Word of God contains everything that we need to have victory in our lives, everything that we need to overcome. Joe was talking this morning about communion. It's not just something that we do because that's what we do on Sunday. We've got to remember what the blood represents. We've got to remember the cross of Calvary. We've got to remember what Jesus paid, how he paid the price. We've got to remember that he did it for me. We've got to remember that he did it so I could triumph over the enemy. We've got to remember the Holy Spirit. We've got to remember the mighty out of, outpouring of the Spirit of God that fills our lives, amen, that we can speak in other tongues, that we can edify ourselves, that we can pray in the Spirit, not according to our mind, but according to the Spirit, because there's a lot of things that we don't really know how to pray. But I want to tell you, if you pray in the Spirit, you can pray the mind of God, amen. Pray in the Spirit, pray in the, un, with your understanding. You've got to bring every thought into captivity to the knowledge of God. See, God gives gifts to mankind. Uh, Satan tries to rob mankind from the gifts. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I have come. Everybody say, I have come. Jesus has come. See, he, he came with a purpose. 
He came uh, that, that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Friend, that doesn't mean every day we're just going to live there. But what it does mean is that when the enemy comes to try to rob, to kill and destroy something from our lives, that we've got to remember that Jesus has come, that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. That God has given us a victory that will overcome, overthrow, destroy every dart, everything that the enemy would try to throw at us, every bit of discouragement, every bit of negativity. But if we take the negativity on board, it will devour us. It will destroy us. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. I don't know about you, but those words are so very, very powerful. God gives his life. He gave his son. He gave it for you and for me. You, when the enemy says you're not worthy, when the enemy says you're not good enough, when the enemy says you're not going to make it, what you've got to realize inside of yourself, you've got to say, no, that is not true. God gave his son for me. Not just for this person, not just for that person, but you've got to bring it that God gave it for me. He gave Jesus for me that I can have an abundant life, that I can overcome, that I can, that I can uh, push back the enemy's plan for my life. That's what God wants to do. Amen. Gives his life for me. He gave his life for the church, for the purpose or for the cause. There is a purpose, my friend. I'm believing for that to happen today. Amen. In giving his life, he redeemed me from the curse in Galatians 3.13. I am free. I, I, if we don't start to realize the freedom and the liberty that Jesus has given to us, we'll, we'll go down that, that, that street of no regrets or full of regrets or negativity failure. Go down Lonely Street with old whoever sang that song. I don't want to go down Lonely Street to you. I don't know about you, but I'm finished with that. In 1 John 3 verse 8 it says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest, that he might destroy the works of Satan or the plan of Satan. In Philippians uh, 2, uh, 7, 2 to 11, here is Jesus. He, he comes on the scene. He said, Let this mind be in you which was also in Jesus. Think it not robbery that we're equal. We've got to realize that God did something supernatural when he came and gave his son. That Jesus wants to build the church. He wants to raise it up. He wants to strengthen us. He doesn't want some weak need thing. He wants a powerful church, amen. He wants a church without spot or wrinkle. He wants a church that, that knows him and knows the power of the resurrection. And it says here that, that Jesus made himself, and I'm not going to read all this because I've got a lot to do today. He made himself of no reputation. He emptied himself of all, all the abilities and things like that, and he came as a man. He, he paid the price. He, he, he did everything that was necessary. And it says because of that, God has highly exalted him and given him the name, the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow. You see, that's what makes me more than a conqueror. Not my ability. This is what makes you more than a conqueror. It's what Jesus did. He humbled himself. He became obedient to the point of death. He, he did everything that God required of him. And God, because of that, has highly exalted him and given him a name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow. If we realize the power that God has invested in that name, I want to tell you there would be no weak or sick among us. We would be living in, in, in hallelujah land. But you see, the enemy comes to rob, to kill, and destroy. And that's his plan. His plan is to take away the victory of the cross of Calvary. We have to remind ourselves every week, every day, what Jesus did for us. The blood of Jesus will never lose its power. The mighty Holy Spirit is the same today as it ever was. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
His name is powerful. It is just as powerful as it ever was. And at the name of Jesus, demons will tremble. At the name of Jesus, demons will flee. At the name of Jesus, amen, sickness and disease will leave your body. We, we've got to come back. We've got to come back. The enemy has stolen so much from us. And we've allowed him to steal it because he's come. And we might have laid hands on a sick at one stage. We might have prayed for somebody at one stage. And, and it didn't happen. It didn't work. And so negativity starts. No, you just got to keep going. Amen. You just got to keep pushing through. I don't know how many times I've seen Clark with an altar call of 50 to 100 people on an altar. Not everybody got healed, but I want to tell you, there were many that did, many that jumped out of a wheelchair, many that saw again, blind eyes were open, but not every a blind eye was open. But I praise God that more than, we started to see more and more and more as you kept pushing through, amen. Trust and obey for there's no other way. You just got to keep doing what God tells you to do. God told me to lay hands on the sick, and that they will recover. I don't know, what did he tell you? I think he might have told you the same. God has highly exalted him. That, that's what makes us more than conquerors. You've got to know who you are. Don't let the devil steal from you. Don't let him steal your identity. You want to break through, if you want to break uh, intimidation, if you want to break fear, First of all, you've got to know who you are. Joe said it today so well. I'm a child of God. Amen. I want to tell you the devil hates that. Why don't you turn to somebody and tell them that you're a child of God? I am a child of God. You see, when we lose our identity of who we are, when the church loses its identity, that we are the power of God, that we are the salt of the earth. When, when we lose it, that we're the voice to the nation. We are, friend, the church, Jesus Christ first, obviously, but he is the head and we're the body. And we are the answer for this nation of Australia. The church is the answer. But you see, if you lose your identity, all we become is a social club. We just we lose the purpose. People will gather at a social club. But I want to tell you, we're not here just to, to gather and have fun. We're here to be the voice. We're here to be the ones, amen, that carry the mantle. We're here the ones to go out there and, and tell j people that Jesus is alive and that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, that he will overcome in your behalf if you allow him to. You see, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. I'm a child of God. I'm filled with the power of God. That's who I am. Who are you? You might say, well, who, who do you? I, 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 don't, I don't think who I am. I know who I am. You've got to know who you are. Do I win every battle? No, I don't, but I win a lot. Do you overcome every... No, but I overcome a lot. Amen. And I'm learning to overcome more and more and more. And I found that Jesus never, ever changes. He runs out. We're singing songs there that aren't just lullabies. They're songs that have been penned by somebody that's had an encounter with an almighty God. And friend, there's one thing that we all need today is we need a fresh encounter with the mighty power of God. We need a fresh encounter, a fresh infilling, a fresh touch from the Lord. To get a touch from the Lord is so real. Hallelujah. Good old songs that we used to sing in days gone by. One of Satan's plans is to close down the gifts. In doing so, he closes down the church. He comes to rob, to kill, and destroy comes to steal the gifts out of the church. Those gifts were given by God to the church so that we could triumph over the devil. The gifts of God. 
We're not seeing a lot of, of activity in this church either. We're not seeing everything, but I want to tell you, we're, we're hungry and we're looking for a move that will challenge and touch the nation of Australia. Amen. We're looking for it. We're, we're open to it. We're, we're hungry for it. We're looking for a move of God that will restore. Everybody say restore back the supernatural gifts. See, a lot, of, a lot of people are fearful of the gifts. may not work. It may this or may that or it might embarrass somebody. We don't want any tongues. We don't want any prophecy. We don't want this. We don't want that. We don't, friend, what we're doing is we're pushing away. We're, we're allowing the enemy as he gets into our imagination. We've got to cast down imaginations and thoughts that it try to exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. Friend, we need the gifts of the Holy Ghost. We need the gifts of the Spirit, amen. We need the... To God to restore back again. I, I know that there are people in this church and, and many churches that they're sitting there and, and they might be in the worship time or might be as we're singing in the Spirit and the Spirit of God might speak something to them. Or it might be something very, very simple. It could be, I, know, I can't even think of anything simple at the moment. But, but it could be something very, very simple and, and, and you're there and, 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 you know, you don't do anything about it. You don't say anything. You don't get up and speak because that intimidation, what happens if I'm wrong? What happens if there's nobody here like that? I remember one time with Clark and, 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 and he said, there's somebody here and, and all you've got in your wallet is a $5 bill. That's all you've got is $5. And, and blah, 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 blah. So all, all of a sudden, this guy gets up and walks out the front and comes out the front. And, 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 and as he started to speak to him then, and as he started to share to him there, there it un started to unfold. He said, I got $5. He said, I was going to go and buy myself something, a hamburger or something, and then I was going to go and commit suicide. See, there's somebody here, with, it seems so simple, so stupid. But if you don't bring the gift, so perhaps somebody will lose their life. We don't, if we don't, you know, we've got to break through that intimidation of the fear of man or whatever it might be. It might sound simple. And look, friend, I want to tell you, I'm not going to chop you in half if you make a mistake. You say something that, that you know, that nobody responds. I don't know how many times I've had words of knowledge and, and you're flowing in it, and all of a sudden you get three or four words of knowledge, and then the fifth one, nobody responds, but you've got another half a dozen in your, in your thinking, and, and all of that one that stops and doesn't respond, all of a sudden you shut down. I've shut down many times. But we've got to keep pushing through. I've had people that never respond. Then many times at the end of the meeting when they're walking out the door, they say, by the way, that's, that, that uh, word of knowledge you had, that was me. Unfortunately, what happens at that moment is the spirit of slap comes upon you. <laughs> so you've got to be hungry. Hungry. Hungry people. Hungry people. We're hungry to see a move of God's spirit. We're hungry, we're believing for it. We, at our prayer meeting, we don't pray, you know, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. <laughs> we, we pray for, for God to come. We pray for a move of the Spirit. We pray for the Holy Ghost. We're, we're praying for our nation. We're praying for Australia. We're praying for anything that moves. And if it doesn't move, we want to get it moving. We believe in God. It's not just a, we don't just have headache prayers. We don't have silent prayers. We're, we're believing. We're, we, we want to see a move of God's Spirit. What about you? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. Again, I'm not going to read all this. You can read it later on yourself. 
But the, what I want to just highlight some things. It says, I don't want you ignorant. That means that we can be ignorant. That means that we, we may not know what God's doing. There are different kinds. In verse 4, there are different kinds, but it's the same Spirit. Verse 7, that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. It's given so that we can all profit. So if the gifts aren't operating, that means that there's loss. I know that there's a thing there that we have. It's called a profit and loss. And we do it without taxation. How many people know what it is to have loss? But you see, if we're ignorant and the gifts of the Spirit are not given, just so that you can get up and say, Oh, hallelujah, for the Spirit of the Lord would say today. No, not puffing ourselves up. But I want to tell you, when you start speaking in the Spirit, I want to tell you, it touches somebody else's spirit. It activates something. It motivates something. It, it busts open something. Because it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by my Spirit, saith the Lord. We've got to be spirit people. We're natural, but though we walk in the natural, we do not war according to the natural. Our war is in the realm of the Spirit, where God has triumphed and defeated every devil, every Satan thing, everything that... that anyhow, done the lot. <laughs> How many people catch my drift? You see... It's there to profit all. To profit all. I don't know about you, but as you were saying, sharing that stuff, it, it's, it's alive. It's the Word of God. It's powerful. And that, that flash from heaven and hit earth, man, it's got to hit me. How many people want it to hit you? Come on, lift up your hands and, and be an antenna. Say, hit me this morning, Lord. Hit me with the power of God. Hit me with the anointing. Hit me. Cool, kashakarando. See, if you get a touch from the Lord, it's a real. Get that hit, it'll change your life forever. If, there's, if, there, if it's not operating, there's loss and we miss out. The gifts of, in verse 8, it says, The gifts are word of wisdom, word of knowledge, spirit of faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecies, discerning of spirits. If ever there is a time... The church needs to have discerning of the spirits. That is now. Amen. Because there's a lot of people that are wolves in sheep's clothing. There's a lot of people running around prophesying stuff that they should shut their mouth. Different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. You see, it's, it's fear and intimidation that stops us and causes us to back away from the high calling. I want to read this to you this morning. It's found in Hebrews chapter 2. It says here in verse 1, it says, Therefore, we must give the, uh, the more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward or just penalty, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed by those who heard him? God also bearing witness. Listen to this. God bearing witness with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His will. I want to tell you, friends, when we started Christian Outreach Center a long time ago, there were signs and wonders and miracles. When we started at the gatehouse, or even before that, there was signs and wonders and miracles. People were being healed. Guess what? People was talking. They were, you see, God confirming. He, he confirms himself with signs and wonders and miracles. There are people here today that, that are still in this church because many, many years ago, they, they needed a miracle and they heard that Jesus was touching people's lives. 
They heard that there was a move of God at Christian Outreach Center at the old gatehouse. Many people watched a new way of living. People got healed. People got delivered. God confirming the word with signs and wonders and miracles and various signs and gifts of the Spirit. Friend, if we walk away from the gifts of the Spirit, we're walking away from our assignment. We're walking away from God. We're walking away from the greatest gifts and the greatest things that God can ever do in the church. Is that true? We've got to start to build and start to allow the Spirit of God to get inside us again. Start to write down things. The gifts of the Spirit are so very real. God bears witness with signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but when I was writing this down, when I was preparing this message, I, I just, just threw my hands up in the air and I said, Oh, open the floodgates of heaven. Oh, open the floodgates of heaven, Lord. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Come down, come, come, Holy Spirit. Come. Do whatever you've got to do, amen, in Jesus' name. I'm not saying that there's no enemy out there. He's out there, all right, and God told us he's out there, but he comes to rob, to kill, and destroy. I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Goliath challenged Israel. Nothing's changed. Satan challenges the church. He challenges you as an individual. 1 Samuel 17 verse 3. David comes on the scene. And, and read it yourself later on. Here was this giant of a man. He, he had on a a coat of mail or an armor. He had bronze on his, on his legs. He had a helmet of bronze. He had a, a spear that was strapped to his shoulder. It was a massive thing. Would have looked horrible. Would have looked terrible. He had an armor a bearer running in front of him or whatever that was. All Israel could see was this giant of a man. And they lost sight of their own champion. They lost sight of God himself, who had won victory after victory, who had triumphed in battle for them, who had, against the odds, victory after victory, and now here's this Goliath, and he's screaming at him. If I prevail over you and kill your champion, you will serve us. I want you to know this. If you don't overcome your fear, if you don't overcome your trial, if you don't overcome that weakness, I want to tell you, you will serve it all the days of your life. You will serve it all the days of your life. But if you prevail over him, he will serve you in Jesus' name. Isn't that a good thing? They lost God. They lost sight of their champion. Kill your champion, and then you serve us. What we need to know is that our champion won the battle 2,000 years ago. Amen. Our Jesus won the battle 2,000 years ago. Our champion stripped Satan of his coat of mail. He knocked his helmet of bronze off his head with a stone from a brook. Jesus snapped the bronze javelin as if it were a toothpick. <laughs> you believe that today? As if it were a toothpick. If you don't rise up and destroy your enemy in Jesus' name, you will serve it all the days of your life. Shyness, fear of man, whatever has to go, it has to go in Jesus' name. Amen? Let it go in Jesus' name. Be just like David when he prevailed over Goliath. I want you to be get ready with that song, John, because in a couple of seconds we'll be playing it. Amen? Be just like David when he prevailed over Goliath. 
I, how many people here got an imagination? I have a vivid, wild imagination. Before I go down to my crab pot, I see crabs in there. Big crabs. Fat crabs. I can feel one coming on now. <laughs> See, when David prevailed over Goliath, he cut his head off with Goliath's own sword. He took his head by the hair and he lifted it up above his head. He, can, you, can you imagine this boy? Picked this thing up by the hair and lifted it above his head. I want you all to stand with me right now. I want you to see whatever it is that tries to prevail over you. Whatever it is, whether it be your husband, whether it be your wife, whether it be your child, whether it be finance, whether it be your job, whether it be this or whether it be whatever. Whatever it is that comes against you, whatever it is that tries to knock you down, whether it just be old hairy legs himself saying you'll never make it, whether he says this or that about you, I don't know what it is, but somehow or other you've got to prevail over that thing. You've, you've got to somehow or other uh, take out that sword and chop its head off, amen, and pick it up by the hair and raise it above your head and start to say, that thing will never, ever have any effect on me again. That thing, whether there's anger, there's bitterness, there's, there's stuff there that gets around us, there's unforgiveness. Man, you might have to lift up unforgiveness and say, your power is broken today. Jesus has destroyed you. He has destroyed you. He has overcome. He has triumphed over you. Today, Jesus is the conqueror. Amen. Let's play that song, Johnny. Right now, the Bible says this, one shall put to flight 1,000, two shall put to flight 10,000. I am not ashamed when I have a need to go and ask somebody, will they come into agreement with me? There's something about the power of agreement. Something about the power of agreement. Finding somebody that won't just sympathize with you, but will come into agreement that whatever it is that gets around you, whatever it is that's trying to destroy you, whatever it is, and you, you don't need me to tell you, you know and I don't need to know. But all I know is this, that one shall put to flight 1,000, two shall put to flight 10,000. Jesus has already paid the price. He has won it. Listen to the demons screaming. The gates of hell are being pulled apart. Amen. I want to tell you, there's an open heaven today. I, I want to just say to you today, if you want to come, if you want prayer, if you want to come, somebody to come into agreement with you, let's just come and do it. Come on. It's already won the victory. You can come today. I'm going to get Joe to come out and pray with me. Come, come Joe, pray for people. Come on. Don't be shy. Don't be, don't be ashamed. Don't be disappointed. Don't go home empty. Just come. Believe God. Fire the power and the anointing of the living God, rest on you, sir. It is finished. Okay, John. Well, I only got halfway through that message. Have to do the rest next week. Hallelujah. Praise God.